thermodynamics, which is the, the first time I give such a course in, in, in Trieste. So it's really a, a great uh, honor for me. Uh, this will be an introductory course in which I'll try to explain uh, some of the um, key concepts in stochastic thermodynamics, which is a, um, an emerging field in, within statistical physics. Uh, of course, um, this is a school, so I'm not uh, expected to, I have a tentative schedule, but this doesn't mean uh, the schedule can change. So if you have doubts or questions, please uh, make me any question during the, the, the lectures, because this is me uh, meant to be like that, All right? So um, this is, as I say, a tentative um, schedule of the course. Uh, these, are, these are the topics that I will try to, to discuss in these nine lectures. Uh, okay, this is an analogy to uh, uh, cycling um, uh, states in the Tour de France, in which we have different curves. So we will go through different curves in, in this path. And uh, what counts in this course is not to, to reach the top of the mountain the fastest possible, but to, to learn and to stop in each of these curves and, and to understand and to uh, realize the beauty of this landscape and of, of this field. Right. These are some key references. Uh, that I recommend you to, to uh, take an eye. Um, especially for the beginning of the course, I will follow the book of Sekimoto, which has the foundations of stochastic thermodynamics. There is also a nice book I can recommend, which will appear this year by Luca Pelitti and Simone Pigolotti. So um, it's not yet published, but uh, when it, it's published, I highly recommend you to read it because I, I could take an eye on, on, on it. Uh, there are some nice reviews in theory, which I, these are few of them. This is a, a field that is exploding and growing a lot. And also on experiments. Uh, the nice thing of this field is that uh, there are experimental and theoretical advances than, that are being put together. So uh, for those of you who are more interested in, in the theoretical parts, go through the, uh, the second group of, of reference. And also for those of you who want to know more about experiments, you can find this nice reference here. All right, so the, what is stochastic thermodynamics? So as you know, thermodynamics is a field that aims to understand how one type of energy is transformed into another type of energy. For example, we have a, a car in which you have the fuel. The fuel gives you heat. It's so one type of energy that is used later on by the car to move in the road. So this is uh, called work. So we, we are aiming to understand how energy is transformed into different um, forms, and also how disorder changes in, in, uh, in physical systems, which is called entropy, we'll, we'll discuss later. Uh, but typically, classical thermodynamics was focusing on big systems, macroscopic systems. Now, there is a new field that studies the thermodynamics of small systems, such as this red particle that I'm showing here below. This red particle, sorry. Um, it's being, uh, it's a colloidal particle, it's of the size of a micron. It is in a thermal bath and it's uh, being exerted an external force on this particle. So the particle feels a force. It has a net direction, but so it's, it's on average moving to the right, but sometimes there are also red events. I don't know if you see uh, in the slide below, there are red events in which the particle moves also backward. So we try to understand this type of fluctuations or red events uh, in terms of its thermodynamics, so how much energy is being absorbed by the particle in order to move backwards, for instance. As I say, this is a fruitful field. There are many experiments. Here are examples. For instance, molecular motors can be described with stochastic thermodynamics, colloidal heat engines, which I will, I will discuss a full lecture on this, also electrical circuits, and quantum dots, which are small devices in which you can see electrons passing one by one. So uh, this is a schematic figure of how this field is growing. Here you can see the number of articles published every year uh, in which the word stochastic thermodynamics appears. So it's really growing a lot in the last years. It is a young field. Okay, many of you maybe were not uh, even born in this, were, were born in after the beginning of this field. Uh, and I consider this uh, pioneering paper, 1998, by Ken Sigimoto, in which it was established a connection between stochastic processes and, and mesoscopic dynamics and, and thermodynamics. This is what I will discuss today in, in my lecture. So uh, my lecture today is on the first law. So when you do thermodynamics, you have to start with the basics. And the most basic law in thermodynamics is the first law. 
What does the first law say is the following. The energy of a system, which is here, this uh, I illustrate with, uh, sorry, with a green square, contains in two ways. One way is an external agent is applying a force, for example, on the system. And the energy of the system is being changed by the external agent. And another way is, is called heat, which is the change of the energy in the system due to the interaction with an environment. An environment is something different to an external agent. This is very important. So an external agent can use useful energy to, to move things. This is work. Heat is something that comes from, from, from the thermal fluctuations. Input the system and change its energy. So what uh, the first law says is that the energy of the system can change in two ways. It has two phases, heat and work. I will use um, this sign convention, which means that if I do work on the system, I consider work positive. And also if, if heat flows on the system, we consider it positive. So when these fluxes enter the system, we consider positive. And when they go out of the system, we consider them negative. This is also called the thermodynamic sign convention. Okay. And where does stochastic thermodynamics lie? So it is basically the path that I'm illustrating here, taking from Sekimoto's book. So as you know, statistical mechanics has connected the micromechanics, so microscopic properties, for example, the positions and velocities of all the molecules in a gas with its thermodynamics, which is the a behavior or a quantity that um, affects the macro scale, so the system at bigger scales. This path is, is being, uh, has been um, uh, worked by statistical mechanics. On the other side, uh, the projection methods have established a link between the micromechanics and the mesoscopic scale stochastic dynamics. So we can look at the system with all position and moment of the atoms, or we can coarse grain and have a point of view that is more from more from far, further point of view in which we don't see all the molecules, but we call we we model the entire inter, all the interactions of the small molecules with the colloid as uh, a noise. And this is called stochastic dynamics. And uh, this can be done using projection methods, as for example, in a classic paper by Swansig. Uh, so stochastic dynamics aims to introduce a framework that goes from the mesoscopic scale to the macroscopic. And it, it does like a shortcut. Well, a shortcut. It's, a, it's a framework to, to um, introduce or to define what is heat, what is work, what is entropy production, and what are the thermodynamics laws that apply to small systems that are affected by fluctuations. For example, a molecular motor, a molecular particle, an electronic system, etc. Okay, so this is the, the path on where we are going to sit and, and where, what I'm going to discuss in this lecture. Right, so, uh, okay, as an appetizer, the first model that was discussed in this uh, context was a Langevin equation. So as you know, Langevin equation, uh, it emerges from a microscopic dynamics. So we have, in the left, we have a, a big colloid that interacts with many small particles from, from the environment. And we could do a description of this with all atoms, all the position and moment of all the atoms. But we can also uh, simplify this uh, description and describe the system with a, in, from a mesoscopic point of view in which we coarse grain all the uh, variables from the bath and we say they apply a noise on the system. The system, for example, can be described by the position of this colloid. And then there, is, there, there are forces that are applied to the system. Of course, there is the force from, from, from the bath. There is the friction force, is the first term in the, in the equation I put below. There is a potential that is created by an external agent. There is an external force, so the external agent can also apply forces that are non-conservative. This is what I call F. And finally, there is this Xi, which is the thermal noise, uh, which we often model as a Gaussian white noise. So it's a Gaussian a number, which has zero mean and delta uh, autocorrelation. So the main question that I'll, I'd like to, to discuss in this lecture is how can we define heat along a single trajectory of this colloid. So we look at the colloid on the right, 
we, me we measure its position as a function of time, and we will see that this position is noisy, as what I'm showing in the blue trace in the bottom. So the question is the following. What is the heat absorbed by the colloid along this trajectory? So this is the question I'd like to, to um, discuss in, in this lecture. OK, so for this, is there, is there a question, sorry? OK, seems not. For this, um, I, okay, I think you are seeing now, I prepared um, some lectures, some uh, notes that I, I'm going to share now with you, all of you. Uh, okay, thank you, participant. I hope this works now. Okay, I think you see my one note. Uh, all right, so um, you see my my notes, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. So, uh, as you see, I have divided my notes in two parts. So, the first part will be the theory, which I will um, write uh, live. So, I, I highly recommend you to follow me with your pen and, or pencil. And the second part will be more on, on experiments, which I already prepared. Okay. So, um, all right. This is the first time I use this application. So, please be patient. Um, all right. So, uh, we are going to consider this type of setup in which we have a particle or a system that is one dimensional, so it moves in 1D, and it's uh, in a potential Vxt. So the potential can change in time. So this could be the potential at time zero, this uh, at time equals to one. This means that there is an external agent changing the potential. Additionally, there is an external force, which is this F which I put in red. And the system is uh, in a thermal bath in, at a temperature T. So for simplicity, I'm considering that uh, there is a isothermal environment, but one can also generalize this to multiple uh, environments or different temperatures and so on. OK, so we have this system. And uh, the dynamics of the system is often described by an equation like this, which will be mv dot, which is mass times acceleration, equals the gamma v. So this is the friction force that the uh, fluid is doing on the system. And then there are different forces. One will be, OK, sorry, uh, I think it's for simplicity. I'll call this u. I think it's better. So let me call this uxt and uxt prime. So this will be, um, OK, u prime xt. This is a conservative force. And then there will be also a non-conservative force, which will be Fxt, and then plus a noise. This will be the equation of motion. It's a Langevin equation here. OK, this is a Langevin equation. 1D Langevin equation of motion for the center of mass of this particle, of course, Remember that V is X dot, OK? This is important. All right, so uh, as I said, this is a Gaussian white noise. So it's average is 0. And uh, its autocorrelation of phase psi t psi s equals uh, 2 kVt. This is Einstein relation, gamma delta t minus t prime. OK, so this is our starting point. And uh, first of all, what we will do for simplicity is to consider that the mass is very small, which is the same as saying that we will look at the trajectories in a time window, which is larger than the momentum relaxation time, which is uh, in this system, it's very simple. It's just m over gamma. So you can do this, or you can say m small. And this is the same as saying we are going to do the overdump limit. In the overdump limit, this equation becomes, OK, we put this to 0. And we can say this is x dot, move this to the left, and or equivalently, just say 0 equals this, OK? 0 in the overdump limit equals gamma x dot minus u prime plus. Right. So what is the heat associated to this trajectory? This was introduced in, in the paper of Sekimoto, 1998, uh, 1997, 1998. 
and uh, it, it has a very intuitive um, reasoning. So we will say, first of all, we define delta Q of t, which is the heat exchange between t and t plus dt, okay? So we look at the system at time t, we look at the system at t plus dt, and we know what is x at t, and we know what is x at t plus dt. With this, we should be able to define a notion of heat along the trajectory. So the way it's done is as follows. We will say that here in this equation, there are different forces applied to the system. Some of them come from the external agent and some others come from the bath. So which forces come from the bath? Okay, first of all, this one. This comes from the bath. This is a friction force that the molecules of the bath exert in the system. Second, we have the noise, which also comes from the bath. So this is one force that comes from the bath, external T. And then this is another force that comes from the bath, external T. Okay? These are forces that the bath are doing at time T on the system. So what is a concept of energy? In the end, the concept of energy is like, uh, force time displacement here. So we have a force down from the bath, and then there is a displacement of the particle, which we call it dxt. So at time t, the trajectory has changed by an amount dxt. Okay? dxt is nothing but x at t plus dt minus x at t. Okay? This is stochastic, and this is also stochastic. Very so this is the definition of Sakimoto for the heat done from time t to time t plus dt. Forces done by the environment to the system at time t times the displacement of the system at time t. Okay. A very important point is what is this circle here? This circle here means Stratanovich product. product. Okay, which I will discuss a bit later. But mainly the Satonovich product means that one has to be very accurate and very careful on how you do this type of um, products, especially when we sum, because this will be along a trajectory. This will be between t and t plus dt. But we would like to compute the, the heat from time zero to a bigger time, let, let me call it tau, for example. So we will need to sum along this trajectory. If we sum, we will do an integral. If we want to know now the, the heat over a time t, we will do an integral between t equals to zero and tau. We want, for example, to know what is the heat up to time tau. Okay. And this is, as you see, is a stochastic integral. Stochastic integrals are extremely, they depend extremely on how you do them, which convention you use. But mainly by now, let me just tell you. I mean, the best thing is you, you, you see my lectures from, from biophysics in QLS diploma, is that this is taken as the midpoint rule. And we, in Stratonovich calculus, one uses the same rules and in standard calculus. This is the thing you have to know by now. Later, I will explain this more in detail. OK, so this is a nice equation. So um, we know what is dq now. But it is not very useful, because the main point is what is this? So you go to the lab, you don't know what is the noise, especially many times you don't even know what is U and F. So this is not easy to measure. What we can do instead if, is we take this, and in the Langevin equation, we say that minus gamma x dot plus xi equals U prime plus F. So you can also write this um, Q of t in a simpler way. I'm calling Q of tau, but it doesn't matter, uh, you can say, Q of tau, we can write it as the integral between zero and tau of, instead of writing this, we will write u prime x t, t minus f x t, okay, times dx. This can be measured because often we know the potential, we know the force, and we, we look at the trajectory, so we can do this easily. Right, 
So this is easier to tackle. Now it is very important that what you see here, we can also call all this item here, we can call it all this F of XT. This is the total force applied in the system at time T, okay? There is one part that is conservative, it comes from a potential, and there is another that is non-conservative that comes uh, from an external agent back. All right, so this uh, can be also written, uh, given having said this, as minus the integral of F uh, XD T DX. It is even simpler. Okay, from zero to that. Okay, so with this, uh, we introduce the heat. And uh, what is very important, something new, a key insight from here is the following. Give me a second, I'm trying to, um, trying to organize this better. Okay, I didn't want this. Sorry. Okay, give me a second. Eh? Just want to, the first time I use this, I, ah. Okay. So, what is very important is that this, I could also write it as, uh, in the following way, I can also write it as a functional of a trajectory. I could call it xt. This is often, I will use this notation for an entire trajectory. This will be x times zero up to x times t, okay? Sometimes I will use this notation just to emphasize that this is a quantity that depends on the entire trajectory. You say sometimes I will call it QT, and sometimes I will also call it Q sub T. Okay, this is the same thing. This is just notation that I will use later. What is important here is that this reveals a way in which, if you look at a single trajectory, you have X at time t, you will have something that fluctuates. And associated to this trajectory, we will have a single trajectory for the heat as well. So we will have for this trajectory, this will have a given amount of heat. Okay, this looks very similar to this, but it doesn't need to be like this. Okay, <laughs> it is very important that this can be, depending on the forces can take, uh, totally different story. But what you see is that if you have a different trajectory now, you evaluate this integral and you will have a different trajectory for the heat. This is important because in, in classical thermodynamics, we always say heat is not a state function. It does not depend only on the initial and the final state of the system, but it depends on the entire trajectory. It is not a state function. And now we have an expression on how to calculate it for a Langevin system, right? Okay, I hope this is clear more or less. The next thing I will do is to define the work. So uh, the work here, okay, give me a second. Stochastic work, I can define it as follows. I will do now stochastic work. So remember, okay, <laughs> one second, this is not very good. Uh, better than like this. Stochastic work will say, what is the work done between t and t plus dt. So here there are two sources, um, the two possibilities. First of all, remember that um, the external agent changes the potential in time. So this, when you have a system, it the system it doesn't move, but the, its energy is being lowered. This is considered as a change in energy, which we call work in the same way in which when you have two level system, you have the particle here and this barrier is lowered. So if this barrier suddenly is, sorry, if this barrier and the particle are moved like this, this is work, okay? It is very important. Here we have changed the energy of the system externally. Whereas if what happens is the following, if the particle jumps like this, this energy that has taken the particle to jump is taken from somewhere and it's taken from the bath. So these type of jumps are considered as heat. So what is very important is that externally, if you change the potential, 
this is and the particle does not move this is considered as work and we can formalize uh, formulate this theoretically as follows so we can say that um, there is a component for the for the work which is written like this we can say okay sorry i'm making a mess parcel u with respect to lambda evaluated at x t times d lambda this is this part the change of the potential uh, due to the control the change in a control parameter in the system i will show you later examples and you will see what does this mean but what i'm saying um, and i can say it now very very theoretically is that um, here the dependency is through a time dependent parameter lambda t okay actually i can show you an example which I was, i'm going to discuss later which is when you have a harmonic potential and you you move it at a fixed velocity you move the center of the of a harmonic potential here lambda t is just the position of the center of the of the trap okay so it is just a way of saying i have a parameter that is controlled externally by the, by the agent okay so this is this term uh, i recall that this would be for example changing the height of the, of the potential without the particle moving you see that here there's no dx so it doesn't imply jumps okay and then there's a second term which is this force this force is external it comes from an agent so then it has it must be considered its energy changes it must be considered as work so we must add here also f xt d xt and we also use that one here okay so there are two terms in the work uh, the first this is the um, driving of conservative or we could say okay manipulation of the potential manipulation and the second is the external work so this is done by external force external okay so this is something that looks measurable we can also integrate this over the trajectory like in the heat and now uh, the question is do we have a first law here or not so let me go up and take the equation for the heat so we were saying i take this equation and i plug in here so this would be dqt equals i said parcel u with respect to x evaluated at xt circle dxt uh, minus f xt dx okay okay I, now there's an important point that i didn't say what does this mean so this means if i want to be very very clear this means parcel of u xt with respect to x evaluated at x equal xt okay so you have to do the derivative of the function form of the potential and evaluate it at the point at which you are observing newton it okay this is what this means i'm just using simple notation just not to make this too boring okay just we can advance and discuss physics more than, than math all right so having said this we have this equation and um what i'll do now is the sum so I sum dWt plus delta Qt. Okay, very important. I'm using deltas because they are not state functions. This is standard notation in, in thermodynamics. So I sum these two things, and you see this and this cancel each other. So we just have, just using simple notation, partial u respect to lambda d lambda, which I can also write as partial u respect to t. Okay, xt dt. I can also write it like this because the potential depends on time through lambda plus parcel u respect to x evaluated at x to dx. All right, and what is this? So this in Stratonovich calculus is du. Okay, so in Stratonovich calculus is just like standard calculus. The differential of a function is partial derivative with respect to t dt plus partial derivative with respect to x dx. 
So this means we have a first law of stochastic thermodynamics that is valid for all for any trajectory xt. Okay. So at every trajectory, along every trajectory, we can measure the heat and the work and the sum is the energy change. If we define the heat and the work in the way I'm saying, All right? So this is the way we do um, stochastic thermodynamics, uh, at least the first law. And of course there are many extensions. So I'm just discussing by now 1D systems, but one curiosity that I could tell you is Okay, for example, if we can do this in ITO, if we can also do this in ITO calculus, it just becomes a bit more um, uh, difficult uh, understanding the terms, but one can also, one extension is um, making the first law in ITO, ITO formulation. I will just show the main steps uh, because otherwise it will be uh, too mathematical in my opinion. So just as a reminder, what is the Stratonovich integral? Uh, the Stratonovich integral, when you have something like this. Okay, I'm simplifying notation. So this is X at time S from zero to T. When you have the Stratonovich integral, what you do, this is um, the limit when n goes to infinity. This is like doing the trapezoidal rule in the integral. It is i equals to zero to n minus one of um, f, one second, f, the force evaluated, or the function f evaluated at x ti plus x ti, ti plus one divided by two times the differential of x, which will be x at ti plus one minus x at ti. This is the way we do, this is Stratonovich. If you do ito, well, actually I can just write it here. This is Stratonovich. If you do ito, the way we do it is like this. We put a point, close point. And the key point here is that instead of evaluating this integrand at the midpoint, this will be time ti, this will be time ti plus one. Instead of evaluating here, that, that we do in Stratonovich, we evaluate it at the initial point. So in ITO, what we do is just this. Okay, this is called ITO calculus in stochastic process. Okay, so we just take this. Sorry, I'm making a mess. <laughs> so we take this, sorry, and now I don't know how to <laughs> zoom out. Okay, I have a problem now. View. Uh, okay, very good. So you have just this, uh, right? So let me just go ninety percent. Perfect. So this is ito calculus, and um, of course uh, there are theorems that relate ito to Stratonovich. There is a theorem that I can cite, which you can use. A theorem is the following. If you have a process X that is described by this equation, plus uh, G, G dB, okay, where G can be a function of X, so this can be multiplicative noise, and this is Ito. Uh, the theorem is the following. You can do as follows, f x s s Stratonovich integral dxs equals to the ito integral dxs plus an extra term that contains dt. So there will be t, so here is t not to t, and then there is g squared x s s divided by two times f prime derivative with respect to x, x s, s, ds. So the difference between these two integrals is just an extra term 
that goes with TT. Okay. So if you apply this theorem here and here, you can transform this, um, these terms that go with Stratonovitz um, product, you can transform them in ITO and add DT terms. And I'm going just to show you the, the final result um, for the sake of time, which is the following. So you can show that the delta Q at time t is minus f. This is what we got before, minus f dx. So we can write it as minus f e to the x. And now there is an extra term. And the extra term becomes just minus d. This is the diffusion coefficient, fx t uh, times dt. So it's the same as before, but it has an extra dt term. And just as a reminder, what is d? d is kdt divided by gamma. So you can show this using this theorem. The same way, you can show that dwt is um, okay, the form I showed before, which is partial du dt plus f statonovich dx. And this, you can show it's partial t u dt plus f nito dx plus d f prime x t dt. So it's very similar as well. There's also only, um, okay, uh, sorry, I made a mistake, problem with that. Um, okay, there is um, a difference of this dt as well. And when we sum them, we get a very similar result. We get delta QT plus delta WT. You will see there. Okay, one second. You have partial TU DT. You also have partial XU DX. You can check yourself. And then the next term that you get is plus D. Second derivative of x u dt. And d, remember, we can show that dx squared equals um, mainly 2d dt in the equation. So then this means that this is partial t u dt plus partial x u ito dx plus one half second derivative with respect to x of u, dx squared. So this is nothing but Ito's lemma for du, okay? So we recover the first law also in it. You can check this later, it's not very complicated and there are also quite some papers about this. Uh, but now I, I want to focus on examples because the best way you can learn stochastic thermodynamics is doing examples. This you will see also in your exam, which I will discuss later. Uh, but the, the way I highly recommend you to, to learn stochastic thermodynamics is you make an example and you try to see what is heat, what is work, and if all this makes sense to you or not. All right. So for this, yes, sir, uh, I have a doubt. Uh, yes. Can you uh, repeat again why Stratonovich is preferred over Ito in in these systems? Okay. So uh, there are different reasons. Uh, this is a very good question. Sorry, not, uh, I Again? wanted to ask why in the definition it is Stratonovich, not the E2. In the definition of heat yeah. and... Yes, I, I understand the question. It's a very good question. And uh, there are different reasons to think about it. So one way uh, is very natural because what, when you have a system that is stochastic and you want to know how much heat happened in a, in a very short time interval, it is natural that in this short time interval, the force that you should consider is the average between time zero and time t, just because there is no instantaneous um, response of the system. It doesn't exist. So the stochastic process in the end comes from other aging, uh, um, a dynamics that is microscopic. So taking into account here in a small delta t, the average force makes sense in this way. There are also more technical reasons so you can also show 
this from projection methods. If you follow um, the reference by Swansik, which uh, appears in, in the book of Sakimoto as well, you can start from a description in with all positional momenta and do a coarse graining uh, of, of your fast variables and, uh, um, and get and calculate the heat out of this coarse graining. And the, the result that you get out of it is the strata noise. So it, it also makes sense when you pass from micro to mesoscopic. Um, but the, the best thing uh, I can really highly recommend you because there is no only one reason, so there are many. <laughs> it's uh, is to read the chapter four in, in the book of Sekimoto, where there are um, many arguments in favor of this um, of, of, of this form, uh, which is uh, the start of its case. But this doesn't mean, okay, it's something very important you have to take into account, is you can use the calculus you want, okay? The calculus you want. The only thing is that you should, if you assume this formula, you have a clear identification of the first law. If you put something else, I don't know. I don't know. But this is very natural. So if you assume this, you can do this in ITO or in any calculus because in the discretization, you can put the point anywhere you want. So you could also do a generalized alpha calculus where you put your uh, discretization here. You can do it as well. But uh, things will become more and more complicated mathematically just because you have to carry on this, these terms, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, I have a question that uh, in the definition of uh, heat, uh, there is two terms. One was um, uh, the friction uh, force in, due to the friction in bath and other was due to the noise. But uh, why don't we have any term uh, that is related to agent? It might be like that we heat is transferred from surroundings to the bath or, or to the particle or the whole system, the particle and the bath makes. So, so this is because we are considering a small delta T. So we consider the heat between T and T plus dt. So we say in dt, t, so the, it cannot be, so we are saying that if the agent does something, it does directly on the system. BT oh. is so small that there is no time that the agent does something on the bath and then the bath does something on the system. So we are simplifying the, the, the analysis in this way. BT is so small that either there is a energy that comes from, from the bath or it comes from the, from the agent and it comes from this equation. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I have one more question that is, can you uh, repeat the, uh, uh, why we have manipulation term in the definition of the work? We have two terms in the definition of work. One was, uh, yes, uh, work definition. Okay, I think uh, here, yes. yeah, there's the external and the manipulation. Yes, why do, do we have a manipulation term in the definition of work? Okay, this uh, is what I was trying to, to explain you a uh, bit before. So okay, give me a second because I'm, I'm trying to make this bigger and this smaller. Sorry. Uh, okay, this is because, um, all right, it can happen. Okay, let, let me do a simple example. As always in stochastic thermodynamics, the best are the simple examples. You have a, a two level system like this. Okay, you have the particle here. And now what you do is you change the potential, but the particle doesn't move. So these are two energy levels. This is at energy zero, and this is at energy E, okay? And now I say, I take this level and I raise it, okay? You follow me? Yes, yes, I'm following okay. you, yes. So, so when, when a, a system, so when the particle does not jump between the levels and the energy level is increasing its energy, I consider this change of energy as work because there is a manipulation of the potential and the particle is not changing the state, but it's changing the energy because someone is changing the, the energy landscape. Thank you. Okay, and, and that is what enters in 
here, okay? Parcel you respect to lambda d lambda. Okay, that is exactly this type of, of um, uh, energy exchange. Right? Thank you very much. All right, great, it's clear. So, as I said, um, the best is to work with examples, and um, this is only one class of models. So, Langevin systems are just one class of models, but one can also formulate all this. And I'll try to be brief uh, because next I want to explain something on experiments. One can also formulate this. Uh, this is another extension or okay for discrete systems. And there's most of the people in working in stochastic thermodynamics work on discrete systems. I like both, but uh, there's a lot of discrete Markov jump processes. This is very important because there is a big um, amount of literature on this. Okay, so here uh, we consider discrete states. So there are different energy levels, and a system that can have okay one or many particles. But for simplicity, I consider one particle, which can jump between different states with some rates. Okay. Here, what we can think of is that there are energy levels. For, for example, for state one, for state two, and for state three, that change with time. So we can have something like this. This will be the energy versus time. And we will have three energy levels. The energy level one is, for example, can go like this in time. The energy level two, which can do something else. Of course, it can cross each other. Right? This is very very general, what I'm saying. And the energy level three, which could be like this. What we will look is at the trajectory of a, this particle jumping within the state. So the particle would be, for example, in state two, then it will jump to another state, then in state three, then it will jump to another state, jump, jump, and so on. So we are saying this is a discrete. Markov jump process in continuous time. So we have a trajectory that um, is um, jumping within states. So when we are in, a, in an energy level without jumping, we are doing work. So this energy change here, this is work. When we jump between states, we are using dissipating or absorbing heat, okay? And this is the way, I mean, in very simple terms, the way one does stochastic thermodynamics with these systems. So uh, in a bit mathematical way, I will do um, a more formal way. If I neglect, uh, well, what I can do is we define a trajectory. We will have x0, x1, up to xf, final time. And what I'm going to say is that we will have xk will be the state in tk, t is more or equal than tk plus one. And these are the times at which the jumps happen. t1 will be the time for the first jump, t2 the time of the second jump, and so on. These are the jumps. And we are saying that at time tk, there is a jump from xk to xk plus one that is different to xk. Okay, so within this picture, one can also define the work. So typically what one does is um, mainly w up to time tau equals also stochastic work and k equals to zero up to n. There are n jumps, I'm saying, and one sums between tk, tk plus one of the change of the energy in xk. Okay, I'm saying this is for example e one t, this is e two t, this is e three t. Now I'm saying that the part, the system is in state xk, so this is the energy in xk at time t is changing in time from an external agent. And there is dt. 
And then one can also add, for example, an external um, work. So this is, I mean, not so common. You, typically people, when they work in a Markov process, they don't consider external forces, but you can also add it. This would be the energy from state minus k minus one to xk due to uh, an external force, okay? This is uh, like the, the FDX from um, an external agent, and this is the manipulation work. Uh, and the same thing will happen, okay, we can also do this for the heat, so the heat up to time tau will be uh, mainly when we have, um, so mainly would be the energy jump, the energy change in the jumps. We'll have k equals one to n of e, xk of time tk minus e at time, uh, at xk minus one at time tk. Remember, it's very important here that the heat is for jumps and we consider the jumps are infinitely fast. So at, at time tk, there is a sudden jump. That's why we are using here tk and tk, okay? And then one can also add here, okay, something like an external uh, energy exchange, which will be just minus this, okay? This is analogous to what I showed before. This is the energy input from an external agent in a jump. We say external agent can only act on the system when there are jumps, as we were doing before. There was FDX, and then here the X is the jump between states. All right, and here you can also show that this obeys a first law. So this, if you sum these two things, you can convince yourself and W plus W tau plus Q of tau equals E at X final at time tau minus E at X zero at time zero. So, the same story as for continuous systems. All right, so I will finish my lecture. I think I only have one hour, so it's a pity. Just showing you an, an example that has connections to experiments. And a good review on experiments is the one I'm, I'm showing here. Uh, this is a good example in which uh, people have, have done this in the lab with an optical tweezer. This is a highly focused laser that can trap microscopic particles. And one can control where is this laser at time t. So you can move the laser, for example, the center of this trap at a fixed velocity, which will be like moving a harmonic potential at a fixed velocity. Here we are moving the center of the harmonic potential at a fixed velocity. So this is the potential. Here there is the um, control parameter, which we say is linear with time, something like this. And in a single trajectory, the particle will follow the center of the trap, like I'm showing here. And associated to this trajectory, we will have the work. How do we do the work? It's very simple. It's, there is no external force, only a potential. So this will be partial u with respect to lambda d lambda. Lambda is here. So partial u with respect to lambda is minus kappa x minus lambda. But lambda is v, vs, and d lambda, d lambda here is vds, vdt. Well, actually, I put it here. So this is the integral. This is what you get uh, for, for the heat, um, sorry, for the work. Sorry, let me zoom in a little bit. So what you say is you get this integral and uh, kappa is positive because it's the strength of the potential. B is positive and Ds is positive. So this formula is very enlightening because it tells you when X is above Ds, so this is lambda of S. So when the particle is here is on the right of the center, this term is negative. So it means you are extracting work from the agent. So when X is on top, so it's advancing the move motion of the, of, of the trap, the work is negative. Whereas when X is below uh, the position of the trap, so it's, it's dragging behind, so the trap is here, but the, the, the particle is behind, work it, the work is positive. So we are doing work on dragging the particle with us. That's why this is, when it's below, we have W greater than, than C, okay? What is very important is fluctuations can rise to 
very, very different values of the work. So if you do a, a different trajectory, uh, so for example, now you have a different trajectory for X, which could be like this, this leads to a different value of the work, okay? So at the end of the day, you can also look at a distribution of work at time T. This will be, what is the probability to find a value of work of work W at time T. Okay, sorry, but this is too thick. <laughs> Let me just, uh, okay. But I think you, you just realize this, okay? This is the pro what is the probability to get an amount of work W at time T? And this you can look at different times, at the long times or at the short times anywhere. The nice thing is this, this problem is very simple. You can solve it even analytically. Uh, you can calculate this distribution analytically. This has been shown in this PRE paper from 2007. And here they show the bars are the values you obtain from the experiment. So you, you produce an experiment, you analyze the trajectories, you measure the work, and this gives a distribution, is these bars. And the line is this formula. Of course, this WT, I'm not saying what it is, but it's explaining the paper. And it just tells you that the distribution is Gaussian. So you can have a non-equilibrium process with the Gaussian distribution. In general, non-equilibrium processes are non-Gaussian for the distribution of work, but this is a very simple process. It's a linear. There's just a spring dragging a particle. So because it's linear, the distribution of work, it's a Gaussian. The same happens with the heat. This is the bars are experiment and the lines theory. So it's very, very accurate. We can measure heat at the units of KVT. This is very, very small amount of heat. Eh? It is really, really good, this uh, experimental setup. And if you do this in equilibrium, you just don't move the particle, you still have heat. And this is an important insight that in equilibrium, the work has a delta distribution. So in equilibrium, remember, uh, this should be, the work should be just the free energy change. But the free energy change between having the particle here or having the particle here, this is V equals to zero. Free energy change is zero here because the distribution doesn't change. So then the distribution of the work becomes just delta W. Okay. This may not be very trivial for you, but in the next lecture, we'll go on this because I will discuss the second law. Uh, but in equilibrium, the distribution of work is like this. It's just a delta centered at zero. But the distribution of heat, they calculate in this paper, you can read, is non-Gaussian. So it has this shape, which has, this is the Bessel function. It has zero mean, but it's non-Gaussian. So this is a good take home, take home message. In equilibrium, the heat has a broad distribution. It has a, a, an amplitude of the order of KVT. This is what this is saying. This is of the order of KVT for the heat. But the work has zero variance in equilibrium. It, it's just nothing. We're not doing work in equilibrium. But there is heat fluctuations in equilibrium. Okay. And uh, just finish because I'm just um, without the time, just to tell you that this is a paradigmatic model in experiments for a, a Langevin equation and thermodynamics. But there are many paradigmatic models for discrete Markov process. And one is this single electron box, which you can see in this review. Uh, and actually, I took this from a PhD student thesis, a uh, thesis of a nice PhD student, which um, is Shilpi Singh from, from India. And here they look at, um, is, is a tunnel junction where you can see an electron. It's a very low temperature. You can see electrons jumping in and out. So effectively, they have like a two-state model and they can change the energy of this, um, uh, this is called an island uh, with an electric voltage. So you can do this type of um, dynamics in which you have one energy level growing and the other um, decreasing. And, and you can observe these trajectories and compute the work and the heat in the same way I was explaining briefly before. So uh, just to let you know that this field is very nice because we can measure this in, in the lab and then compare with, with theoretical 
uh, calculations. It's not just in the black mode, which is uh, a very nice uh, insight. I believe. So uh, with this, I, I finish by today, and maybe it was a bit fast. But I hope uh, you got a bit an idea. Uh, of course, this room in YouTube, so you can uh, check and ask me questions if you have later. But maybe I open uh, this for a question if there is uh, any question. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I had one question, like uh, maybe it's slightly general in a sense. Now, in this example, which you mentioned, this async work, uh, just switching the gate itself will cost energy, right? Do they calculate such, I mean, do they uh, consider uh, such energy costs also? Yes, 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 of course. Well, well uh, this they do not consider, <laughs> sorry, in, in the end what they can see is what is the energy of, of the island. But of course, uh, plugging in your, <laughs> let's say, maybe it's easier to discuss in, in, in terms of the optical tweezer. So, so yeah. here, there is an energy, an effective potential that the, the particle is feeling, which you can measure even you can do histograms and fit to a Gaussian distribution and, and get a, an effective potential. But here we don't take into account the energy that you do, you use plugging in the laser. This is out of this um, description because this also costs work. It costs electricity and it costs <laughs> heat as well. This is taken out of this description and this is very important. So we are doing thermodynamics in, in, a, in a small system and also considering the direct interaction of the system, which for us is a particle or an electron and a potential that we can control. But of course, there are other sources of work and heat that uh, are not taken into account. Uh, we do that, we cannot use stochastic thermodynamics. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the general question was like uh, doing this, I mean, to do this minute amount of work, we are actually spending way more. Uh, energy than uh, what we are extracting. I mean, it just seems uh, <laughs> slightly inefficient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But um, but the, the main idea of, of this field is to inspire the, uh, what will happen in the future in which we will be able, or, or uh, people will be able to manipulate things at low energy expenditure. Right now, these are only platforms to test um, theoretical results. But uh, in the future, one can also hope that we will do this uh, without so much laser power. Uh, this could be possible. Um, but by now, these are uh, big experiments in which you have heat and so on. And you want to understand the heat flow at very, very small scales, which we, you can understand with stochastic thermodynamics, not of the entire <laughs> uh, device. Okay? That's, that's microscopic and classical thermodynamics. Yes, thanks. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Edgar. I think um, 